Today's topic is the carousel of project management lackluster outcomes. Mad, mad, madness. Wherein a construction organization continues to have either negative outcomes or outcomes that don't 100% hit the goals of all of the parties involved. Oh. What the hell are we doing here, Harry? Hi, everybody out there, Jojo Nation. Diojo is the do your own job dojo. Sweep the leg. Curated by John Isaacson. Contractor. Guy is Victor Home. Author. There's nothing like it out there. And mediocre podcast host. Nicely done on keeping it together. The, the Diojo podcast. We should be listening to you. Helping contractors shorten their dang learning curve. Before we talk about the project management goals, we have to first talk about the organizational goals. Buckle in, really the goals of any company that wants to stay in business. And it boils down to two things. Let's let's give the audience a minute to think about what two things does a service-based business under this construction umbrella, the skilled trades, what does it need in order to continue to exist as a company. We believe we've condensed it down to two simple things, especially as a business owner or manager to help communicate to your team. Two things that every business needs to continue to exist. Item number one. We need to be profitable. It's not an option. Because I want to make bank, bro. We're not a charity. Why does a company need to be profitable? I want to drive a Range Rover. We need to be profitable so they can reinvest in the company, grow the company, be able to offer things like health care, retirement plans. All of these things are incredibly expensive and they're not line items that show up in direct cost. So we have to be profitable in order to be a business. It is an essential function of a business to be profitable in order to continue to exist. Otherwise, it's a charity or a hobby and an expensive one at that. This is not a game, cupcake! Two things that every business needs to continue to exist. Item number two. Can you guess what the other thing is? The other thing is happy customers. I'm feeling this. At the core, the organization needs Item number one. Profitability. Item number two. And happy customers, a reputation, something that perpetuates them to continue getting more customers. Um, customer satisfaction is important. Otherwise, you that really eats into your profits as you continue to have to pay to make things be completed or for customers to be happy. And at the technician level, a lot of times they don't have direct impact other than productivity on profitability so we really want them to focus on making customers happy so if you focus on profitability you will likely struggle to make the customer happy but if you focus on customer satisfaction usually your team if you have the right team members can find ways to then be legitimately profitable uh, positively profitable so the organization needs those two things we need profitability, and we need customers to be happy. We need dollar signs and happy faces. Carousel of project management lackluster outcomes. Mad, mad, madness. So for the project manager, what are what do we need in relationship to that? What things lead to profitability and happy customers? And they're fairly similar. So you want to be a project manager? The basics of project management have been the same throughout the ages. We need to be able to complete our projects on scope, whatever we agreed to in the contract. We need to be able to complete the project on scope. We need to be able to complete it on budget. That's how we project out our profit and say, we believe if we hit this marker, we'll have hit a gross profit that will lead to a net profit that will continue to allow us to exist. And we need to be able to complete it on time. If you complete a project on scope, on budget, on time, you most likely will be profitable and you most likely will have a happy customer as well as all the additional parties involved in the process. 
RESTORATION MACHINES! If you want to get off the carousel of project management, lackluster outcomes. It's actually quite simple. All you have to do is complete projects on budget, on time, and on scope. The basic parameters are simple, just like the basic parameters of what a business needs, an organization needs, are simple. What a project needs is quite simple on paper, in principle, but getting to plan, a production plan, executing the plan, and seeing it all the way through, adapting as things come up, is a lot more difficult. But to get off the carousel of project management madness, we first have to understand the basics of project management success. That means the contractor's happy, the customer is happy, if there's more than one other third party involved that could be in the case of insurance work the adjuster or the insurance company representatives third party administrators third party consultants it could be take insurance out of it maybe a mortgage company's involved or a financing outfit family members can be involved there's property managers or other owners representatives or an hoa where there's multiple parties involved so anything that results in not achieving you know 100 percent of the success of the success goals laid out this is not a game cupcake how do we as project managers as construction professionals and organizations steer towards more consistently positive outcomes. We want to thank our sponsor. I will not bow to any sponsor. Epic Estimates. Any estimate, anywhere, anytime. Let the award-winning Epic Estimates help your team write the next Xactimate or Symbility Estimate. Freeing your team up to do what they're good at while helping your business maximize productivity and profitability. The Restoration Industry Association. Connect and collaborate with your industry peers through the largest nonprofit professional trade association dedicated to the unique plight of restoration contractors. Join us April 8th through 10th, 2024 in Dallas, Texas for the RIA Convention and Industry Expo. Actionable Insights has built the Actionable Xactimate Profile, which provides live estimating guidance while you work in Xactimate to help your estimating team avoid costly mistakes. Create accurate, more complete estimates with the Actionable Profile. It's a no-brainer for anyone looking to upgrade their Xactimate estimating workflow. No more estimating mistakes, no more misline items. How to Suck Less at Estimating, Habits for Better Project Outcomes, book number four by John Isaacson. This is available in paperback as well as an interactive course available through our friends at Restoration Technical Institute. Gain valuable insights on setting your estimating team up for success, processes and procedures for good sketches, detailed photo documentation for claims, how to level up as an estimator, and field resources such as using Xactimate for materials list and budgeting. By taking the six module course, again through our friends at Restoration Technical Institute, you can gain six hours of self-paced instruction that are eligible for continuing education credits with the IICRC. Thank you to our sponsors. Please let them know that you heard about them on the D.O. Joe Podcast. The Avenger, the D.O. Joe Podcast. We're going to talk about what are the traditional benchmarks of project management success. Extrapolated from this fine book and the presentations aforementioned, project must be completed on scope, on budget, and on schedule. These metrics are simple enough. What happens if a project is not on budget, not on scope, or not on schedule? So project management carousel of lackluster outcomes. A. This project was completed on scope and on budget, but, but, but it was off schedule. Pardon me, Mr. Perfect! So what are some of those scenarios? Most likely the customer will not be happy with the final outcome because a missed deadline either means they didn't get to move back in their home or were unable to open back up their business when expected. Dang it! What are the scenarios that can lead to things being off schedule? Could be things outside of the project manager's control, maybe material, availability, long lead times, 
customer not making proper selections in a timely manner? What are some of the things that maybe are inside of their control? Extending those timelines for poor planning, uh, miscommunication between estimating and production, whether it relates to the scope or the budget for certain items, maybe inability to direct the workforce, whether it's in-house or subcontractors. Any number of things can lead to this outcome. The result may be a missed opportunity for a positive team review or could result in financial consequences for reimbursement of lost time by the customer. So project management carousel of lackluster outcomes. B. This project was completed on budget and on schedule, but off scope. <laughs> what am I supposed to do with that? Uh, it, interestingly enough, during a presentation for the National Association of Home Builders, some attendees remarked that this would be impossible. Perhaps we're a bit more familiar with this term as it relates to insurance work, but I believe the proper name for this type of outcome is fraud. This is not a game, cupcake! Think about it. You've completed it on budget and on schedule, but you haven't completed all of the scope. Now that may or may not be noticed by the customer. So maybe the construction team claims they have completed the job, but either they took shortcuts or didn't have proper quality control measures in place or possibly purposely covered up their failures. Those are some horrible stories. Obviously, if you run your business like this, eventually it will catch up to you. Um, and, and to be clear, this can be done, you know, intentionally or unintentionally, intentionally being your shortcutting or covering stuff up or, you know, trying to hide things. A lot of these things would be maybe behind finishes, maybe didn't do all the framing that you scoped out or didn't use the proper wiring or plumbing or ducting or Maybe you're going to replace all the wiring and plumbing, but instead you just patched in. So if it's intentional, you know, that will catch up. Um, it is fraud. This is not okay. If it's unintentional, it still potentially can be fraud because as an organization, you're expected to have the quality controls in place to check and double check your work. I guess I forgot that you never ever make a mistake. And eventually that also can catch up to you. So it's important to know your scope. The organization needs to communicate that properly to the project manager, project manager to the production team. And again, making sure that all parties, the customer, the contractor, and any other invested third parties understand what is and is not in the scope because scope creep can be where, as a contractor, you don't properly charge for things that should be added to the contract as an addendum or a supplement or a change order, but also maybe not properly crediting for things that legitimately you didn't have to do or for things that you overlooked or purposely didn't do. Something we'll be talking about in an upcoming episode is some alternative perspectives on recruiting, hiring, and developing project managers. A project manager. Many of those principles come out of our best-selling book. So you want to be a project manager? By John Isaacson. It's available on Amazon. We've actually added some updated information. A project manager. This is a great resource source for owners who are hiring, training project managers, project managers who want to level up, and construction professionals who want to step into a project management role. A project manager. General mindset, habits that will help you be successful as a project. So project management carousel of lackluster outcomes. C was completed on schedule and on scope, but it is off budget. That, as you describe it, would not be very effective at all. 
So the contractor in project scenario B tried to keep things on budget by cutting corners, the scope. The contractor in this scenario did not control their scope creep, failing to stick to the scope or to charge for legitimate change orders. So there's a difference between off scope, we're cutting corners by not doing things in order to meet the budget. And for this thing to be off budget, the sources are fairly similar in that in the reverse. So we cut scope to make budget or we miss scope and we're wondering why we hit budget or better, um, you know, which is unfortunately a common way that some contractors conduct their business. But the other way is either it's not fully captured on the front end by assessment and estimating what needs to be completed, or another very rare, real scenario is if we're either doing low bid work, lowest bid, you know, common in government contracts or large projects, or insurance work where there's reviews, revisions, and things are cut until they can be proven otherwise. Both those scenarios are supposed to provide for legitimate change orders and supplements. But when those aren't captured or another scenario where the customer, uh, we almost always tell our project managers, be very careful about doing favors early because most people, whether intentionally or unintentionally, like to test the boundaries of what they can get. Well, it wouldn't be so much if you added this toilet paper holder and just bought us a new toilet or, you know, really there's only one more bedroom of new flooring. Why couldn't you just throw that in as well? Or couldn't you make my deductible go away? So those are maybe some illegitimate things that customers might look for. But also when the production team opens up a wall and there's additional framing that needs to be done, their mindset is we don't want to wait. We want to get this done, get in and get out of here. That could be an organizational issue or it can, well, actually that is an organizational issue as well as a project management and production issue. Each of those entities were on the same team need to understand what the organization needs to be healthy and whole at the end of a project. So we've done this extra work for you. Is there a way that we can re create change orders in the field much more rapidly that, it, uh, that capture the scope and some semblance of the cost? You know, we, hey, we opened up this framing. You know, we think we're going to have a half a day on this and some materials. You know, so the organization said, you know, two employees working for half a day plus materials is generally in this ballpark. Can you sign this field change order? We'll submit that through our estimating system to spit out an actual change order, but we want to keep this project going. Um, the best way to do that is to stop, get it written, get it paid, because the best time to get it signed and paid is now before you do it, otherwise you lose leverage. The second best might be, you know, follow up email. Hey, we agreed, you know, roughly half a day's labor for two employees, which we estimate is about this much. We think the material is going to be about this much. So your rough price is going to be about this much. And then, you know, the next would be you agreed to do it, but, and you're, and you're going to pay for it, but we don't have time to put numbers on it. So we'll catch up at the end. Um, and then whether you do or not, but it's important too, because, oh, you'll, you'll charge me a reasonable price. Yeah. Yeah. We'll charge you a reasonable price. Well, the, uh, the contractor reasonable price might be $1,500 where in the customer's mind, they're like, I thought that was going to be $300. Oh, really? You thought two people working for half a day plus $150 in materials, 300 was going to be reasonable. Yeah. You know, so then we get in this weird, so it's, it's always better to have clear, clear clarity than it is to, to proceed without it. Um, but also sometimes when you're up against it, it seems like a small thing. There just needs to be at the organizational level, review, consideration, and then somehow expedite that process. Unless your company just says, hey, 
change order shuts everything down has to go through this process financially maybe that's safer but production wise and customer happiness timelines that can be troublesome everything comes at a cost everything comes at a cost the other scenario is if we're getting behind schedule maybe there's penalties or we just don't want to get back we start throwing extra money we start throwing extra people what is that saying how come there's never enough time to do it right the first time around but there's always enough time to do it twice you know um, which is we try to teach our production teams if it's going to be an extra half an hour even an hour let's just stay and get it done if that means we don't have to go back the overtime makes sense but if you're going to be there for another four hours plus you know then then we need to have a conversation so there has to, I guess the short of that is making ways for those changes to be captured expediently understood by all but also to be able to get quick answers in the field because to your production team's credit they may not fully understand the consequences financially but they're trying to keep the customer happy keep things moving forward so it's not necessarily the sign of a bad employee just maybe they don't it doesn't impact them in the same way that it impacts the owners and managers of the company um, so if you want them to care about it number one explain it but maybe have some kind of um, shared benefit other than if I don't do this, I got to come back and it's going to extend the project. So, Great story, compelling and rich. Thank you for tuning in to the Diojo podcast. We hope you were informed. Yeah, so I've learned something here. And entertained. Are you not entertained? dyojo.com forward slash podcast you can buy john a beer you can support the show or you can buy one of the books i've written the last one being how to suck less at estimating <laughs> what am i supposed to do <laughs> and you can find them on amazon there's nothing like it out there if the common benchmarks for a successful project or bringing completing the project on scope on budget and on time when any one of those items is in jeopardy or off the tracks, it doesn't typically result in a positive project outcome. Carousel of project management lackluster outcomes. On scope and on budget, but we're off schedule. If there's financial consequences, no one's happy. If there's no financial consequences, the customer's not happy, but the contractor's like, well, I mean, we got two out of three, but that can be a detriment to future work and perception, especially in a small community, or you know, affect repeat work and your reputation. Not good. If we have a project that's on budget and on schedule, but off scope, again, if we're cutting corners, eventually it's gonna catch up to us. If our quality control isn't very good, that's gonna catch up to us as well, because as those standards lower, the rate at which those things catch up and the depth of the impact is gonna be greater. It's not typically gonna correct itself. It's just gonna get worse. It's just gonna get worse. Project was completed on schedule and on scope, but off budget. Either we throw money at it, so we hit that schedule, or we're not capturing the scope creep, whether that's the estimator saying, hey, we short bid this or bid this to certain compliance standards, so we need to track legitimate change orders and supplements that's probably a lot of where a lot of organizations have issues trying to get those communication pieces from the top down but also from the bottom up so that we're capturing all of that you know a lot of that can be segmentation it's it's difficult if if my job is to frame the wall unless i own my own business i don't also want to be responsible for writing the estimates and selling the job you know unless there's some kind of commission basis or something like that so you just got to think about a lot of these force us to ask questions at the organizational level. Structurally, have we made our system that makes the most sense for our customer and for us? Are we empowering our project managers and our production teams to uh, achieve these outcomes? Carousel of project management lackluster outcomes. This segment in a broader topic, introduction to project management and how we can elevate that role and responsibility within the organization, help people coming up through the trades understand what is necessary to excel in those roles. 
So hopefully you've learned something today. Please send us some feedback. If you disagree vehemently with anything we've said, or if this was helpful, please share, like, share, subscribe, do all those things. And make sure that you sign up for our Diojo Wire. We promise not to spam you more than once a week with information from your favorite podcast. Please review the resources mentioned in this podcast and on our website as we think they will be helpful to you and your team. And we'll continue to thrive in the trades. Thank you. Buckle in. What the industry needs is conversations like this. Thursdays are four. The Ojo Podcast. What are you, stupid? My, my, mindset change. Helping contractors shorten their dang, dang, dang learning curve. Once you get to the point where you're not willing to listen or not willing to learn, mm-hmm. you pound sand. The Ojo Podcast. This is the stupidest thing I've ever heard. <laughs> this is complete hogwash.